appointed. They have but managed to he in the uh, earlier this year he applied for chief water court judge. And we, we got a lot of people, like 80 pages of negative comments uh, for him. Shop, shop he realized that, so he got a bunch of people to do positive comments for him this time, including Trout Unlimited, uh, you name it, you know, they're positive. So about half, 50-50 are positive, negative uh, for the comments. And we're just hoping that because he's so controversial that the Supreme <laughs> Or justice uh, chief will, um, will not appoint him. And, the, and the, the other two guys that are there are, are more experienced. Well, they're more qualified. They're, they're more qualified. They, they worked with Montana Water Law for years and years. Right, right. right. You can't, there's nothing you can do. But to me, Weiner started with that job in mind on this compact because doing all those abstracts and stuff was all for the water board. So he was ready, was ready to go. Yeah, he was ready to go. So if Schweitzer was in the office right now, he'd already be there. They lost the field. Mm -hmm. That could be a case. Let's imagine mm -hmm. And, and two fine point aspects were... Anyway, uh, if you haven't given us your email, uh, put it on there. We'll be happy to contact you. Um, if you want to set something up for Granite uh, County, yeah, I'm, we can I'll, talk I'll, I'll go back in. I know that uh, Adler's probably lobbying, and it's going to be hard to get hold of him. I can call the place alone on the phone, and I'll go from there and see it. Yeah, that's a good court, probably. Anyway, but, uh, also grab our cards if you haven't already. Uh, we've got our blog and our contact information so that you can If nothing else, uh, you know, it's kind of like the, the deal. Uh, we got some. Thank you. And you haven't trapped wire yet? No. But, uh, you know, we had, we had a problem there no. for our predators in the county. But the tribe said we're going to give everyone 1855 and couched it as a big concession. Um, you know, but that's most of them already have 1855 water rights. The other thing that I'm familiar with is um, BIA irrigation projects. They are never managed in priority. They don't have to be. They follow federal regulations. They don't have to be managed in priority. So a group of irrigators over at Flathead said, Oh no, the project's going to be managed in priority and we're going to lose. So let's give away our water rights so that doesn't happen. The whole premise on the management of a BIA irrigation project is wrong. So everybody is scared and there's so much misinformation that it's just unbelievable. And so do you feel like you have success when you go and talk to the legislators or to Governor Bullock? Have you talked to him? We, we believe that uh, Bullock the reason is, why the compact stopped in the legislature is because we were successful in getting enough of them to say, whoa, this isn't just like the other compacts that we rubber stamp. There's something way different about this compact. So they, we believe that it was the efforts of our group and the LLC. There are two opposition groups uh, fighting this uh, within the reservation area. Um, we're very successful in being able to get them to stop. And I will say that there are a lot of legislators that are still on board against this compact at this point in time. We're very encouraged by that. Um, they get it, they understand, and they want to work. That's why legislators came to us and asked us to develop that alternative compact mm -hmm. to provide it. We're not trying to negotiate with the tribe with that compact. We're just trying to say, if you guys, Mr. Compact Commission and Mr. Tweeton, had done your jobs, this is what the, the compact would have looked like. Instead of this 1,400 page document, you want to talk about the abstracts, how they kind of tried to... Oh. Have you spoke to groups like Montana Stock Growers, for instance? Have they ever contacted you and had any interest in I this? I talked to the Montana Stock Growers in Helena. Uh, we went to a trade show up there before this, right when the session started. And they were did not want to, That's didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, uh, they, they do uh, allow people to do presentations uh, for the compact, um, but they're sitting on the fence and they won't say anything. And the way I look at it is when an organization like that sits on the fence, they might as well be endorsing the compact. Because to, to just not speak out against it, I think, is just not doing for their constituents what they need to be doing. They need to be speaking out about it. Well, they claim, well, you know, the deal with Montana stock growers is that um, the oh, biggest yeah. thing, there's people on the reservation that are pro-compact, like Steve Hughes. Oh, yeah, right. we know. You know, that. he's, <laughs> he's a member of Montana stock growers, and he's, you know, in 
favor of the compact. You know, um, a local neighbor in the Helmville area, he's a Montana stock grower, and he believes ardently in collaboration and getting along. You know, and so he's a member of the compact. And then there's guys like us, uh, or not a member of the compact, he's in favor of, you know, he thinks it's probably a pretty good deal because he, you know, anyways. And then there's guys like us who are stock growers members who are opposed to it. So without, you know, when I've talked to stock grower leadership at length, trying to get them to use, to use current policy that we have on the books to go against it, but we've gotten nowhere because we don't have anything pointed directly at the CSKT. You know, we've got policy on the books about protecting water rights, about, you know, uh, you know, protecting property rights, you know, the viability of, you know, the legality of in-stream flow as beneficial use and all these things, you know, which are all, would all be addressed by the compact or in the compact and they just, well, we don't have anything expressly in the, you know, in the policy so we, we can't do anything. Well, which is which that deal that I showed you, yeah. Kate, which is exactly what the point of that is, is to say, all right, now we do have something. Yeah. Now go get them. Mm -hmm. Now, Steve Hughes used to be on the Compact Commission. Yeah. Okay, he was a governor appointee, I don't know, mm -hmm. a few years ago. Came off, went into the Joint Board of Control, we believe, probably, to try to make sure that this agreement went through. Now, he and got voted out, didn't he get kicked he out? Got, yeah. He got voted he got out, voted but out. he's a rabid proponent yeah. of this. He, he also be. has significant mm -hmm. tribal mm -hmm. leases. Mm -hmm. Remember, a lot of these people have conflicts of interest, mm -hmm. and I think that's an important question to ask because right now, um, just this week, um, uh, that group of people sent out letters to all the irrigators uh, on the reservation with the list of names of people that joined up for the LLC. <laughs> and said, these are the people that are causing, going to increase your legal fees. And, uh, you know, there, it's, a, it's becoming a, a huge battle there, but th the problem is, is these people have conflicts of interest, and yeah. that's not being conveyed to the public, um, just True. like Jay Weiner, we believe, has conflicts yeah. of interest. Is, is Jay Weiner, was he involved in all the other compacts that were done in the state? Of no, I, Crow. No. Or else, some of the Forest Service compacts. Maybe Crow and Blackfeet? Crow and Blackfeet. Uh, I guess I'm just curious why, they, why all the other ones went off with kind of without a hitch, and all of a sudden, this one, right. they're all of a sudden trying to right. grasp at everything. We're, most of the other reservations are closed. I realize that. Mm -hmm. But that, I mean, I, I just don't want to understand why. And that. they were quantified. I well, think, I well, think well, it's, I, I think that's it's what really I'm saying. Why all of a sudden do they change their policy and they won't, won't quantify it and they're trying to grasp at everything? I that's think. the larger. It's, that's the larger agenda. We think, frankly, my view off the record, sort of. <laughs> um, Tweet and Wire are federal agents, and the governor Schweitzer and those others have a federal agenda, and that agenda became utmost and. Schweitzer basically told the winer, and Bullock told the winer, fix it, make it happen, and that's what they did. They used all these years to basically be able to justify their thing, stack it in a 1,500-page document, say it's just the same as everyone else. Go ahead and pass it. Well, yeah, isn't, isn't too, aren't, the, aren't the CSKT tribal yeah. leadership, aren't they, and always have been quite a bit more progressive and forward-thinking, you know, a different kind of tribal leadership than what the other reservations have? Supposedly, um, but I view the progressive as sort of the liberal influence. So I I believe that since, you know, the Obama administration came in, I mean, there there's a deal that mm -hmm. Obama has cut with all the tribes, and the tribes are going to be doing the federal bidding. Yeah. And but, you know, there's, there's, a reason, but, yeah. there's a reason why, you know, I mean, this process has been going on for 30 years, yeah. and where there's been no progress made, you know, 30 years, and it's because the tribes demanded, I mean, I guess my view or my understanding is because they've been so demanding from the very beginning as to what they're going to get, and only in the last few years since Schweitzer and Obama has anything actually, you know, started to roll forward because of the concessions made to that tribe. So there's been something where that tribe is just, you know, they, they're much more... They've stonewalled it. Too. Yeah, they've stonewalled, but there's a reason why that they didn't you know, negotiate in good faith 30 years ago. They were probably know, waiting for an opportunity yeah. time. You know, like I said, and I guess that's why I say there's a, they're, they've always been a much more progressive, forward-thinking, you know, I don't know, whatever. Pseudo-intellectual aggressive. Yeah. 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 And you may be progressive is not the right word. Yeah. That lawyer and that compact. I mean, 
legislature allocated $2 million a year, and when it came back, the legislature is the one that finally said, we're not giving yeah. any more yeah. money. You guys had 30 years to do this, and you haven't done it. So then it was turned over. Uh, these people decided, well, they're lawyers. We're not going to make any more money. We're going to have to hurry up with a lot of paperwork, mm -hmm. throw it all out in front of you, and get mm -hmm. it done. There are clearly another another agenda going on, and clearly, I you know, um, I wouldn't say I admire it, but I think the tribe was had a pretty smart strategy over yeah, the last yeah, thirty years. Um, and they've, uh, taken a de they've taken a completely different tack than any of the other tribes have. You know, well, there's yes, a they reason have. for that somewhere. Yes, and again, I think it's federal. But you know, uh, Terry has found, looking in the water rights database, that um, the CSKT have sixteen million acres acre foot claim already on Buffalo Rapids outside of this two sixteen million acre two sixty million acre feet claims um, on Buffalo Rapids for a, a water that was quick claim deeded to them um, in twenty ten. So we're thinking, okay, that water, you know, that exists is on the state water base, uh, why is it not in this compact? Um, and what happens is the is what happens at the compact fails or does not or passes, are they still going to go after that water right? So we think that um, unless something really happens significantly, it's my personal view that the tribe is going to aggressively challenge everybody's claim. Whether they're going to get it or not is another another issue, but they are very aggressive. And all I can hope for is more sequester. And, uh, <laughs> and basically the Fed's looking at something else because I'm waiting for them to just drop this because I don't see the Fed's really going to bat for them. And in fact, if these off-reservation water rights were legal, believe me, the federal government would be right there saying, this is it, this is a done deal. We've approved of this. They haven't. So, and the other thing about the tribe to keep in mind is that collectively the bloodline is probably not much above 1-8. You know? So there's, there's a lot of, of aggressive white blood in there too that makes mm -hmm. that try somewhat more sure, aggressive. Not only that, that, but we've already educated them with tax dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? Where's, where does like Sorry. Western water users what avenue of blood have to keep it? Why do we call the LIC? Right. So where are they at now with this lawyer and all that? Barter situation. I get gas, I get food and a place to live. And, um, you know, honestly, if I were charging what I charge, it wouldn't happen. And so it turns out it's pretty clean because they can't get at us for, you know, taxes and IRS consultants and all that kind of stuff, how much you're paying her. So and what also can I get for two T-bone sticks? <laughs> <laughs> Probably a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty good, and it drives them nuts. It drives them nuts, basically, that there are people here just because of this. And because of and because of their concerns, so it drives them crazy. And there's a there's a group of people, including the LLC, that have just dug in, dug down into the courthouses, yeah. the the information that's out there. And they mortgage their homes. Yeah, a lot of them have. Two guys have mortgaged their homes. So there's a there's a pretty good group that's is being the cautious. Compact Commission holding their public meetings that they sent out flyers that they were going to have. Well, they probably wouldn't have done that if we hadn't started doing ours. But then they decided, whoops, we got to we got to combat that. So they started doing off the reservation. Maybe. They have been doing that. Oh uh, yes, they started well, doing it. Well, uh, you talking about with this uh, latest request for feedback that they were going to go out that and talk to part stakeholders? Of it, they were they're not public meetings. They're private meetings. Private meetings. Yeah. They're private meetings, and it's with uh, what they call decision makers. Uh, but stakeholders. It has, it has then, involved members of the Compact Commission, though. The lawyers for the Compact Commission. Yeah, the recent one was Melissa uh, Hornbein showed up at Nine Pikes out there in a private meeting with certain irrigators, and I use that term facetiously because that, that term actually shows up in the Water Compact, Con consensual agreements with certain irrigators. That's, mm -hmm. I'm not making that up. That's in the compact. And that's where it goes to Klamath, because, yeah. and that's why it's so dangerous in this water use agreement, because it says if you enter this consensual agreement, you'll get water in a drought. And that's the same thing that happened at Klamath. Those tri you know, people entered that agreement, and those who didn't are out of water. Now, and so this kind of agreement? this kind of squeezing the irrigators and telling them they don't have any water rights that that is it incenses me. 
And that's where they, you know, when they came to Deer Lodge here, uh, at the meeting here in Deer Lodge, I mean, the threat after threat that was oh, made absolutely. go to court. And what they didn't understand was they had a room full of irrigators that just come out of court, and by God, they're still, oh, all the shit, let's just go back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and the people yeah. of Deer Lodge Valley, you know, they've been to court over their water, and they're going to fight for it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't, their little scare tactic in Deer Lodge, I don't think worked mm -hmm. like it could other places. You know, like up on the northern end of the county and stuff, there's a lot of them irrigators, they played the, oh, we got we got to abide by this, because they're, they're not used to mm -hmm. fighting over water. Mm -hmm. Well, they're certainly, they can't be having any impact on the water users as far as trying to persuade them that their compact is a good deal. Well, they must be just doing it for political advantage so they can... Well, there's some water users, both up there and, and down here, that are so scared that, you know, they, they just want to get along. They, they want to well, be yeah. on the winning side mm -hmm. of this so that they're... The, the big stick is time and all water time and memorial, mm -hmm. and you're you know you either sign on with the compact and you get what they allow you, or they just take it all. Is the big you know mm -hmm. the, the big yeah. stick and the little why, carrot and the big stick? Yeah, that's why they always say we're going to protect existing uses yeah. of water. They gave them all away, and but they're going to negotiate back to protect existing uses of water. And if you say anything, they call you a racist, right? Yes, yeah, that's oh, it. Yeah. We're, well, that's we're, what we're, we're, almost, we're almost immune to that. <laughs> you know, most of the irrigators and uh, how they're going to feel about telling prospective clients that their water rights are underneath the tribes. Yeah. Um, my name's Christian Bass. Um, I'm, I'm a semi-retired engineer. I also have a realtor's license and I've been a businessman in Ronan for 30-some-odd years. <clears throat> and as a realtor, you're required to make full disclosure. And if you don't, you're in deep trouble. And as a general rule, the courts hate realtors, so if you end up in court with someone and you didn't disclose something as a realtor, if you got nine strikes against you, maybe one to bat your way out of it. But it, you have to tell a prospective buyer of any piece of property that they may not be getting what they may consider to be senior water rights and that you, you basically are going to have to read that uh, DNRC disclaimer to them. And, and when you and you guys probably had a little trouble picking it up without reading it two or three times yourself, but I'll give you the short version. The short version is that if you have water rights off the reservation and you get in trouble with the CKST about your supposedly senior water rights off the reservation and you go to the DNRC, they're going to read that to you and say, good luck, I guess you got to go to water court. So you're going to end up in the water court off the reservation which is going to go right to federal court. So, so you're off the reservation and you're not going to get justice from the DNRC or the or the water court. So the, the and it affects property. Right. Property value. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. And there is a requirement, I think it's, I can't remember the exact name of the law, but there is a requirement that if any department action has a potential impact on property values, the study has to be done. Yep. And uh, so these were not done here. They said there's no impact on property values. Well, if you're an irrigator who's been using three acre feet per acre for 100 years on your property, and you get dropped down to 1.4 acre feet per acre, do you think that's going to affect the value of your property? And then if you are here and all of a sudden you have to read that you're under the jurisdiction of the tribe, there's no way going to buy anything. So the economic implications of this are significant. The bottom line is, don't you think you control the water, you get to control the land? Absolutely. A prime example going on right now in this country is the climate facing. Correct. And I mean, they, it, ain't, it ain't just affecting the livestock producers. I would suggest anybody in this room doesn't know anything about the climate facing or hasn't fallen, you better start following Because they're beating the hell out of the town people, right. too. And they're, well, they're, they're tax, trying? Your tax base is tough. Yep. What, did the, yep. what did your county commissioner do when all of a sudden you have land that was valued at $1,000 an acre and all of a sudden it's valued at 40 You know, well, that's, the, you the cut down on the money all the way down. It's a, it's a chain reaction thing. There's, you know, I got a buddy of mine who works for Agribeef and he runs all the grass cattle and he's, you know, he has a bunch of calves in the Klamath Basin, the upper Klamath, you know, with Chilliquin and Fort Klamath. And he, his estimation kind of a a wag guess too was, but 100,000 head of cattle were kicked out of the, were lost out of the 
upper Klamath Basin just because there's no, you know, the water was in the stream and they couldn't irrigate their, their pastures. You know, that's just grass and calves. It has nothing to do with the farming that was going on, you know, in the lower basin. You know, 100,000 head of cattle. So this is ruinous, plus the bias against agriculture is, is very clear. I just wanted to mention the Flathead Lake claim. This is where uh, you have to read closely because otherwise you don't get the import. So they claimed all of Flathead Lake, right? So you think, oh, well, all right. But no, what did they claim? They claimed all the natural flow that leads into Flathead Lake. So a drop of water that falls on top of the glacier mountains, well, eventually it's going to end, end up in Flathead Lake, so you can't develop. And so essentially Flathead Lake, why that disclaimer is on whitefish, mm -hmm. Eureka, and so forth, it, it controls development all the way upstream, no more development. And that's what the tribes want, stop, would stop. It, would it be a correct assumption, Kate, that basically the, the big picture is they're claiming all of Western Montana, the, uh, west of the Continental Divide, yes. anything that flows to the Pacific right. Ocean? Mm -hmm. Because it ain't, if, if you get a map out and you look and you just think, oh, they're, they're just <laughs> claiming the Clark Fork River, they're claiming every tributary, mm -hmm. not to this little Clark Fork here, the big one that's right. going yep. in the snake. Yep, and it is. That's everything in western Montana. That that's that that's correct. And this is why we see that see and say that there's a larger agenda going on here. Now, just recently, there have been two things that probably would have gone unnoticed if the compact had passed. And one of those is the tribe's claim for Kootenai Falls, some acreage around Kootenai Falls, claiming that that is to consolidate reservation land. Wait a minute, that's ceded territory. What does it mean to cede your rights, title, mm -hmm. everything? But there's a policy in Interior to try to now take these lands off reservation, call them reservation land. Now what's the connection there? Oh, we were talking about this on the way over. There's a there's a mine up in Libby that's been stopped by the tribes. Mm -hmm. So where's Kootenai Falls? Right downstream below the mine. So what does that lead to? Water quality regulations. So the mine still won't go through because they have that. So it is very clear that tribes move, they're where they're moving is not only jurisdiction over the water, eventually it'll be water quality, jurisdiction over water quality, and all the environment. So therefore, you will be all underneath the tribes and, and suffering. Well, you mentioned the in-stream water rights before. Mm -hmm. uh, just this past week, the Forest Service mm -hmm. has applied for water rights in Granite County and also um, Anaconda Deer Lodge. And I mentioned this to Terry when the, um, they restarted the hydroelectric plant uh, over by Georgetown Lake. There was a letter sent when the license was reapplied for. There was a letter sent by FERC to the CSKT asking them if they want to be involved with the process. And at that point, I was wondering why would they be asking them. And um, they never asked them about anything else that mm -hmm. happened in Granite County. Mm -hmm. So there is something going on with that. Well, I know in Ravalli County, one of the things that they told us was that whenever they do a development project, like they were doing something, some work on the airport down there, uh, they are required now by law to coordinate with the tribes. Uh, and they had six tribes that responded to their request as to whether or not they wanted to coordinate specific to that project. So uh, they were very concerned about that because it really complicates things when you're having to deal with those issues. Uh, Kate's right, they also have reached down into the Bitterroot and they've gone after Medicine Tree, an area that they call sacred as well as Kootenai Falls. Um, another thing that we're hearing from other county commissioners is the Bonneville Powers um, has a, a mitigation program with the tribes where um, for the damage that they cause by putting in dams, uh, they can purchase, they're purchasing up land throughout western Montana for this tribe and it's along the waterways. It's along the waterways and what this is doing, um, it's cr they're calling it critical habitat for the tribe. But what it does is it erodes our system of governance mm -hmm. because as those lands get purchased up for the tribe, they get put into tribal trust and they go off the tax rolls of the counties. So the counties are starting to become concerned. Kate mentioned Kerr Dam. 
per dam pays $1.2 million in property taxes to the, uh, Lake County every mm -hmm. year. When they're going to take over the dam in 2015, and I still can't figure out how they were able to have the option to purchase the dam, but they did, um, and that happened years ago. Uh, so in 2015, they're set to take over the dam, and those property taxes will no longer be paid. So either one of two things will happen. Either Lake County is going to have to curtail their services, mm -hmm. or, they're going to, or they're going to have to increase taxes on the people that do pay property taxes. It's a huge problem. People are starting to awaken to the fact that this is collapsing our systems of mm -hmm. local governance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to just be aware of it, because there's a much bigger picture to what's going on with it. And so we feel like the purchase of all these lands along the waterways is designed to, as another way to choke off landowners mm -hmm. by getting control of the water rights in those properties, um, short of this compact. Well, I think there's been doing that in eastern Montana for years. Mm -hmm. They've been buying a lot of that. Sand. Very good question. I've got kind of a, I don't know, like a legal procedural question. Got two layers of it. Um, now, like with the Treaty of 1855, and they're claiming the, the you know, their treaty, off-reservation treaty rights, and then trying to extrapolate that into, you know, a, a water right for maintenance of, maintenance of fisheries, which is essentially an in-stream flow mm -hmm. right. Well, now in-stream flow has never been, rec did, you know, the, the concept of in-stream flow didn't even exist in 1855. Right. And, you know, in the state of Montana, wasn't recognized as a beneficial use at the legislative level until 2007. Mm -hmm. And like the Murphy rights on the Blackfoot River are what, 18 or 1973, you know, 70 ish or something like that. You know, so, you know, they're, they're claiming an in stream flow right, you know, and referencing an 1855 treaty that didn't even, you know, the concept didn't even exist. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the other layer of that question is so, you know, this has been stymied for 30 years, this whole CSKT process. So was the tribe basically holding their breath and waiting until an in-stream flow beneficial use did exist, you know, so that they could make those make those leaps of conclusion? Um, not exactly, because um, a Federal Reserve water right does exist for a fishery on the reservation if it's in the treaty. Uh -huh. So on the reservation, that right exists. What you're right, though, the CSKT held out for 30 years, because what have they done? Um, they've filed timely various cases. They kicked the state out of the reservation in 1996, and they've held on to that for a long time. And the state refused. This UMO that they have, the management program, has been around since 2001. Also, the claim that they own all the water has been 2000, around since 2001. The state has refused up to about 2003 or 2004 refused to go along with that, so they waited until they got Mr. Weiner, mm -hmm. who got a Democrat governor, and then all, all heck went forward. But right now the adjudication process has completely stopped, and, and it's, it's an issue. And the tribes intend, to, I think, to be, um, to be difficult. Um, I know it's time to go. I just wanted yeah, to show... Yeah, but we have another big meeting, but you guys please stay here and use, okay. use the... Because I'm sure you guys have questions. Please. And what is your request of us? What, we would, we've had uh, several peanut butter sandwich. pretty <laughs> 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 good right now. <laughs> we would like um, your um, uh, some kind of statement that you are not for the existing CSKT compact, and that you would support an effort to come up with an agreement, uh, something that would work for all Western Montana. And we've had Flathead uh, Sanders. Uh, Ravali, Ravali um, rural <coughs> counties already do that. Do you have like a format on issues that you want us to cover? Because if you do, if you'd email that to us, okay. and then we'll bring it up with Rim, and we'll take okay. the action yeah. on it on okay. Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. okay. We, we believe this is a critical point. Fix yes. this thing yeah. or go to court. Well, and you want that before uh, your meetings on May 15th? Yes. Right. Well, that's so. going to be hard to do because the commission is dissolved. Right? No, commission no. still exists. Well, well, there's argument about that. It yeah. doesn't have any statutory authority. In right, they were supposed to dissolve it. So what, it's May? Did. But, you know, but if you have, our, if you have my e our email address, yes. email it to me okay. or to Donna. Okay. We'll, 
organize and put it on our agenda for Tuesday right. or Wednesday. Okay. And then get it back to you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Very you. nice to meet you. One quick thing, if I can say yes. for the commissioners, yes. is it you know it, it behooves you guys Thank to you. get the sure. off the off reservation stream part of it out of the compact so that benefits you directly. And then if we get that far and if we're successful in getting that out of the compact, we would ask that you don't forget us up in Lake County. <laughs> <laughs> Done. You're gonna grab that. Done. Okay. Okay. Anyway, please, please we use this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. They were really uh, perceptive, as I assume. If they weren't, uh, um, please show me because. Okay. Uh, we went to Granite County, and uh, I, we think we were set up. Uh, two of the county commissioners did not show up at the meeting. And uh, Bill Schultz of the Compact Commission was invited to be there at the meeting. And so we realized that they weren't interested in hearing what we had to say about this, so we just let them talk out the meeting time. Because uh, they, they clearly, um, the woman, Maureen. Maureen Connor, was not interested in hearing what we had to say, and she made sure those two commissioners yeah, were she, not there. Well, there's one thing about it. She is not reelected. Uh, she is not there. Uh, well, up, there's uh, one point on that. She now works for MAKO, and MAKO is the primary sponsor of all of this uh, water Sustainable contact. Development yeah. uh, Agenda 21. Well, the one that gave you the phone number to call for okay. Grand County? Because so I, I, I'll, I'll guarantee you that, uh, and when does this have to, you'd like to have this by when? Well, the governor's report will be presented to the Water Policy Interim Committee on September 9th and 10th. Okay. And uh, so um, I don't know that we have to meet that deadline specifically. What do you think, Kate? You, I, I think any time in September you, would be fine. If you can get the information to me, I will, when I get back, I will get a hold of the, 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 the county commissioner, and I will... Uh, guarantee that the two that weren't there will be there. If, if, if your legislators in that area are interested in what we're doing, pat them on the back, smile at them. If they're not interested, see if you can't talk them around. That's the big thing. We were very fortunate. We went to Ravali County last week and all of their legislators came and all of their commissioners were and there. And they got it. They, they did. Were, they got they it. realized that right now it's really the legislator's responsibility to protect its citizens. And what this compact was designed to do was to undermine that. And of course, it was submitted at the 11th hour with no time for well, review. We, we invited, I invited Vukovic and Representative uh, uh, Gordy Pearson to be here, and I don't imagine Gordy's probably working on it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure Vukovic is not at all in favor of this. Oh, I don't imagine. He's very, he's very Democrat he's a, anymore. Oh well, yeah, he's kind of. He's kind of <laughs> <laughs> he got involved with us and he started <laughs> start start single life. Yeah, yeah seeing things differently. Right. I have another question uh, for you, I'm Kate. Um, related no. to the one from my wife. You know, Winter's doctor in France you know, establishes the water rates. Right. So, you know, uh, which is the basis of the you know the R W C C. Here's my very specific. My telephone number. My name's on the back of that card. And the amount of water is sufficient to fulfill the purpose of the reservation. There's one thing that. Like none of the doctors, everybody like, thinks about never it. Water lays out a, you know, a definition of the purpose of the reservation. So how, how, you know, I mean, the thing how are we supposed to quantify the amount of water for a to definition that is never, for a purpose that's never defined? The three I mean, that, three why wouldn't it? Most that, to me, that should be the first line in any compact is the purpose of the reservation is. Next one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And this is how we do that. So why don't they put that in there? Is it a corridor from Canada? Past Yellowstone Park. They and have this is part of the deal. The first thing they, they did have is done they broke in every other the mining industry. Yeah. That's, that was my yeah. and, and it's then easy they to broke the log and, and the way to break agriculture and um, to I make wanna, their water. I just want to get your. That's right. And this is a rough. This is a rough draft that they've been um, working at uh, and divide and you know, we're Rocky Mountain yes. stuff growers mm -hmm. in yeah. our. You know, uh, uh, they always help with mining stuff growers, but. This is a uh, water and air. Could you pass it down here, please? Some of it was that way, but it's not any different than Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's a few bad apples that make it look bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what happens when you get here. Uh, well, you're absolutely right. Um, we see that, we understand that. 
Um, Excellent. I'm going to give all I would do. I have a client and a copy of that folder, the packet that we gave the county commissioners. Oh, very good. Some Thank other you. stuff in here. You know, this is something um, that including that? a letter. We, we did a FOIA um, request with the state of Montana is, and came across a letter from John Tubbs, who's now the head of the DNRC for the state of Montana, Montana to the Contact Commission who set aside for us on the negotiations for this contract. If you read it, you'll see that this commission completely ignored the side so boards and the guidelines that they were supposed to adhere to. So um, for, you know, this is just a, a mirror of what they received, and I'll also get you a copy of the statute that Kate uh, had uh, so that we can share that with you as well. Very good. Well, I think this is And this is one that says, I guess, we also have a water rights blog. Um, it's on these blue cards that we keep people up to date as to what's happening in the compact. And um, you can go in and take a look at that. The sign-in sheet, if you want to be on our email distribution list, we only use it with issues about this water compact, so we won't use it for any other stuff. If you want to hear from us uh, when we know what's going on. Brian mentioned that Jay Weiner wants to be on the water court. Um, this past week they forwarded the three applicants for the water court to uh, uh, the Chief Justice of the Montana Supreme Court. and. Um, saying that he met the minimum qualifications for this, so um, we don't know if he will actually get on the Supreme Court. We certainly hope, because we asked the public to comment on his uh, application, that the court will see that he's just too controversial. But this is the man that's driving this compact, mm -hmm. um, and he's the one that tweaked. He uses all the court cases that tend to expand Indian water rights, and he ignores any of the court decisions that uh, tend to restrict it. So that's kind of how he's gotten away with it so far. And he comes out to these areas telling people, well, this is, this is the best you're going to do. If you go to court, you're going to get even less than what's in here. But we maintain that you can't do any worse than this compact if you were to go to court. It's that bad. If you really look at the details of it, you and, can't do worse. And in court, there's no way administration is ever discussed. So they're not going to get that. They will not own all the water and all the land, and they won't get all the Flathead Lake, and they won't get anything on no, the preservation. Mr. Tweeten has already admitted in a meeting that they do not want to go to court. They do not want to go to a Montana. They don't want to go to So the compact is to avoid Yes, it is. Yes. And the purpose of the compact commission is to quantify the water rate and reach a fair and equitable settlement division of the waters between the citizens and the tribes. Those are the only two purposes. And so it's not administration, it's not leasing, it's not off-reservation stuff, it's not any of this other stuff that they put in here. These are very simple things that they've done in every other case. Why here? And we think it's this Columbia River uh, basin and the other states and the other tribes downstream. And you uh, have Tweeting told me when Matt was there. And Tweedin told me, I told him, this is not right. You know yeah, it's not right. right. And it's not right that the Fish Wildlife and Parks have control over the mm -hmm. in-stream floor. He's a big man. He taps me on the shoulder and he says, it don't have to be right. <laughs> Didn't he? Well, I asked, wow. asked Tweedin, I says, is like, I no, said, well, you, you wind up in a, I told him that you wind up in a war mm -hmm. because people were. My dad told me years ago that there's three things that guys will fight over and they'll kill over. And it's women, it's fences, and it's water. And he says, and it's in reverse order. Mm -hmm. Well, I asked Tweeten if he would had received specific instruction from the governor to not use the or to basically give away their negotiating, you know, the, you know, their uh, the, the best, the state's best po possible position to the, you know, wouldn't negotiate with the states. And he just got real red in the face and stammered and said, I didn't even make sense. But yeah. Oh, yeah, that's just typical response. Every, everybody, yeah. everybody says, well, if you don't understand, as is, you're the only one in the room who doesn't know what I mean. And there's no, that, 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 that just didn't make As a sense. matter of fact, in 2000, Either 2000, 2001, there was a letter from uh, Cottingham, was it, who said to them, you know, do not relinquish 
the full water rights on the reservation, then that's not a, a valid bargaining point, so mm -hmm. don't do it. So, yeah, the DNRC was given instructions at one point in time to not capitulate to the that's exact the extent that they have. Yeah. To the exact extent it. that they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, the whole thing is actually just, uh, in my opinion, if you kind of look at the broad spectrum and stuff, we have the circle cleanup thing mm -hmm. going on. It's, it, this is about saving the fish. They, they forget to look at the predators they have. Um, they're using everything. I mean, they came fully loaded, and, and they figure they're going to win this thing. And uh, I feel it's our part to educate them. I mean, how many people you sit and talk to don't realize, I mean, they don't, uh, observe the fish-eating birds that are on the river currently today. They forget we never had a raccoon population that we have today. Our otter population is huge. Um, mm -hmm. They eat a lot of fish. Okay, let's go to water quality. Last weekend I went to Gardner, Montana. The Yellowstone River was looked like this carpet was that dirty because of the mudslides that are going on down there. The, uh, we went on a raft trip. The guy said, when that, when that landslide happened in the middle of the week, half their rafting trips canceled because the water was too dirty. They wanted to know if they were going to clean it up. So it's, they're using everything, and yet they're the ones that are causing the problem. You mentioned so, raccoons, right? Yes. Okay, and then there's the uh, Clark Fork Reforma uh, Reformation, okay? And they want to reintroduce raccoons into the uh, uh, hall area. I don't know if you caught that one. They, yeah, so well, they're already reintroduced because in, well, in, 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 in Hall, in, in Granite have. County. Oh, we've already got them. We've well, you're going to get more. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, people, this is coming at us from all ways, okay? We've got here Granite County, they're going to have a meeting on the hazard mitigation plans. Get a load of that one, 175 pages. They're stepping on water, they're stepping on zoning, they're, uh, they're coming for control. In Granite County, there's that one. There's another one called SIDS, which is the Comprehensive edu um, and Economic Development Strategy. All these things are coming in from the outside, and I got a gripe with Granite County because everybody's ignoring it. We had these fine people to, in Granite County discussing this last year, and just like Terry said, nobody showed up for that meeting. They were also that night at the museum, and very few people showed up for that too. I mean, this is not a joke. This has been going on for a while. And I'm sorry, I am from Granite County. I have a problem that Granite County is just treating this very lightly. lightly. And you've got three commissioners now that haven't a clue of what's going on. Maureen Connor, she was voted out. She was working for MAKO. MAKO is pushing the sustainable development. Uh, they're definitely against private property. They're definitely against uh, ranchers, and she did everything, okay? And the other two just depended on her for everything. They hadn't a clue, and that's why they weren't there that day. They left it up to her. She pulled all the punches. She's left Granite County in dire straits. Let me tell you that, and I hope to God you get something going in Granite County because we're going to be losing it. And that's a nice chunk of real estate that the federal government would love to get their hands on. There was a survey that went out to all, all county commissioners. I wish they were here. It was a survey saying how much influence does the federal government have on your, on your county. Granite County is owned by 61% of the federal government. I'd like to know if our county commissioners filled out this survey to send it in because they don't do anything. And that's the danger with the uninformed Republicans, the rhinos in the legislature, if they get this compact, unthinking, completely unthinking, and like I say, we've begun to think beyond that because they should be sued entirely yeah. if, they, if they give this away. They just do what they want. If somebody with credentials, especially from the federal government, comes in and says, hey, this is a good idea. And guess what? It's not going to cost you a dime because we got grant money. But we all know what comes along with grant money. Strings. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention that even the in-stream flow has technical problems. Because as opposed to be looking for fish, they're basing everything on a robust river. There's a Federal Reserve water right for in-stream flow for fish, but there's no Federal Reserve water right for a robust river. 
you know that any river that runs bank full all the time, all year, every day? No. Robust river means to them bank full, which is that, all the time. So who does that help? Downstream. Downstream. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even help them because eventually they're going to run out of water too. That's right. Well, it's going to backfire on them. Yeah. It will. And, and this, this, to me, this year is one of the finest years. Of, we are seeing springs and small creeks in the mountains. People are having to move cattle because they're out of water. Mm -hmm. and they haven't seen these ever seen these go dry. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's some guys that just solely survive off the of water tanks, and, and they're, I mean, they're monitoring them pretty regularly mm -hmm. because they are. The water is mm -hmm. not there. So I think that's a fine example. You know, when I see uh, the Little Blackfoot River, you drive down the Little Blackfoot River, all the ranchers are done paying. They've got their water on. And, yeah. and you'll see between them ranches, before the ranch where he's taking the water out, whew, there's hardly any water in the river. You pass the ranch, all of a sudden there comes water back mm -hmm. into the river. They, people don't understand. All they, they see is, oh, he's driving up, driving up the river. Right. No, Return he's up. building the mm -hmm. aquifer. That's right. Exactly right. You know, and that's what they need to learn. Exactly They right. need to realize that water creates water. Correct. And that, that is one of my biggest beefs here. If they want to do everything on <coughs> stream flow, they're going to run it through <coughs> all those canals. And then what happens to the wetlands? What happens to everybody's shallow well? What happens? There's been no estimate, no analysis of that. If, if they want a robust, a robust river or stream, they better start putting a bunch of dams back. If they want a robust fishery, they better mm -hmm. start putting the dam mm -hmm. back in and shoot the damn birds. <laughs> so, and they're all on the native species, <laughs> <laughs> including the magpie. Magpie, yeah. You're kidding. Oh no, no. it's endangered <laughs> up here. You can't shoot it. Can't shoot it. You're you're can't shoot a magpie. Can we can go yeah, yeah, shoot a raven or a crow? Yeah, yeah, a raven or a crow even. Oh, how is your sacred group funded? How is how is your group funded? Out of our own pockets. Yeah. Just like ours. <laughs> <laughs> we're, a volunteer, just we're a volunteer group and we pay for our gas to go all over western Montana to, uh, to do these meetings. We do town halls, oh, we meet with county it? commissioners, okay. and we do typically what? when we go to the town the hall Sunshine meetings, Station. we have a, buck, a donation bucket asking That's for it. help. Um, I just wanted to there's a bunch of us from Rocky Mountain Talk over here today, obviously. Yeah. I don't know. That was that plot, the email I sent out last February, you know, and I sent a copy and I presented it at our meeting. You know, they were looking for solicitation for. for I money. thought that was. <laughs> I've already done this. I'm ahead of you. He wasn't there too. Did you already, we already agreed then? No, I just sent it out to everybody on an individual basis and stuff because I did when I went up to the. Yeah, and along that line, you know, if you get a group of people, as you can see, we'll work with 10, 15, 20, we love 15, 60, and 70, but you get us a group, yeah. and we'll try our damnedest to get there. 